Katie, darling. Well, it's been such a long time, hasn't it? How are you, dear? You must be 26 now, right? So that means that would make it about 15 years since I last saw you, huh? By George, has it really been that long? Wow. Just wow. Anyway, how have you been, Katie? All good. You do know who this is, right? Uh, hi. I'm sorry, but no, I don't know who this is. Who is this? You don't have my number. No. Who is this? Oh, so you must have deleted it. That's upsetting to know. So, who am I talking to? It's me, Judy. Oh. Oh, don't sound too excited, young lady. Calm down and keep your hair on. <laughs> Hello. I was just kidding. You know who I am. Katie, it's me. I'm your mother. All right. It's interesting that you can still call yourself that. You hadn't been one for the last 15 years, as you pointed out. I don't think that you can qualify as a mother. Oh, don't be such a Debbie Downer. I came here with good intentions. And of course I'm your mother. I'll always be your mother, Katie. Come on. I even named you Katie to make it sound like my name. Right? You're Katie, and I'm Judy. Right. How did you get my number anyway? I changed it years ago, especially to avoid you contacting me. Oh, don't remind me. It was like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Do you know how many people I had to go through to get it? At least ten people, including some of your old classmates from elementary school and middle school and some of their moms. Some of them just wouldn't stop blabbing away either, bragging or complaining about their kid. As if I cared. Anyway, I hope you're grateful that I managed to find you. Grateful? Yeah, you can thank me when we can talk in person. Uh, I don't think so. When did I agree to that? Oh, no need to be so shy. Uh, I'm not being shy. I'm just politely disagreeing to whatever you're saying. Oh, I know, honey. Don't worry. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but I know about it, okay? Know about what? I truly have no idea what you're talking about. Quite frankly, I don't think I even want to know. I know that you built your duplex home so that you can have me live with you and your husband. Congratulations, by the way. I know I wasn't invited to your wedding, but no hard feelings about that. I'm over it. So, what kind of room do I get? A big one where I can decorate it however way I want, I hope. Uh, <laughs> hold on. No, you're not moving in with me. No one is moving in with me. I have no clue what you're talking about. I know that you just moved into that lovely new home of yours. And you left one room available for when I agree to move in with you guys, right? I'm here now. You can ask me directly if you want to. My answer is already a big fat yes! No! Are you crazy? Have you actually gone see now already? I thought you might be too young to go see now, but have you? Oh, please, Katie. Look, I'm already set and ready to move in with you today! Okay. I have your address and I'm already on my way. So I'll be there soon, yes? You're seriously not making any sense at all. I don't know if you know, but you're totally jumping the gun here. What do you mean? It's okay, you were always a quiet one. You always needed me to speak out for you. I guess some things don't change, huh? I can speak for myself, thank you. And the reason you think I'm shy is not because I'm actually shy, but because you're so impatient that you can never wait for me to get a word out. 
I have plenty of opinions, thank you very much. One of them being that I think you've seriously gone mental. Well, listen to you. Look who's grown to be all cocky and unladylike. At least I don't have tramp written all over my face. Katie! How dare you! How dare I what? Huh? I'm not mental or senile or that last name you called me. You don't even know the half of it. Half of what? Why, you just one day randomly decided to up and leave me and dad behind? You don't know the half of what me and dad had to go through. So you can stop playing the victim game and shove it up yours. Katie, come on. It's been ages. You can't still be holding a grudge against me for all this. Forgive and forget, right? A grudge against my birth mother who left her only daughter when she was 11? And for what? To hook up with some surfer dude from God knows which homeless street he lives on. Not to mention how you left my dad, too. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is funny to you now, is it? No, but I just didn't think you'd remembered. You left the both of us. And why would I even want to live with you? Let alone want to speak to you. Or see you. Breathe the same air as you. What the heck do you think you're doing texting me anyway? You don't think that's creepy? What? Oh, honey. Gosh, this is going to take me a while, isn't it? Listen, dear. I know that you built a new duplex in Cleveland, okay? Close to Lake Erie. In fact, I know that you have a great view of that lake from your house. How the heck did you know that? Have you been spying on me? I have my sources. <laughs> your sources? What? More low-life hobos who think they can get inside your pants in exchange for a favor? No, Katie. In fact, he's a legitimate private detective called Ryan McKenzie. And he did a great job finding your address for me. And how many times did you spread your legs for him, huh? Katie! And why the heck did you get a private detective to spy on me? Well, like I said, you weren't the easiest to track down. All right. Yeah, you're right. I guess some things really haven't changed. You still are a big old lazy slut. Katie! You better watch that mouth of yours, young lady. I'm only being nice because it's been some time since I last saw you. But I'm still your mother. And I still have my rights to whip you up into shape so that you can behave, you know. Me? Behave? Coming from some slut who abandoned her family for the biggest loser on earth? Oh, I don't think so. I'm not a slut! You don't call your mother names like that, Katie. Oh, so Tramp is better, is it? And cut the I'm still your mother act. As far as I'm concerned, you are not my mother. My mother is dead. Right, well, it's okay. This will all be okay. I may not have been there for you before, but I'm here now, aren't I? And imagine if we lived together. What kind of life that would be like for the both of us. Imagine our bond that we'd have again. You were stuck to me like an extra limb when you were a kid, Katie. I'd very much love to rekindle our relationship with you again. Mother to daughter. This will be wonderful for us, okay? No. Don't you dare talk to me about being my mother again. Don't you text me or call me or try to do any of the above ever again. I mean it. But darling, I'm already here. Open your door or look out the window. You'll see my blue sedan. What? Hi, Cecile. I need your help. Desperately. Right now. It's an emergency. Katie, what happened? I thought you were on your way back home from the honeymoon with Peter. What's going on? I know, I'm with Peter and we just landed not long ago. I'm still at the airport, but really need to sort this out first. But anyway, listen. 
You're at home, right? Yes, I'm right here, honey. Okay. So, you know my birth mother. Um, you mentioned her name was Judy, right? Yeah, her. She texted me just now telling me she's right outside our home. She knows where we live and she thinks she's moving in with us. What? Move in with us? In this home? Yeah, I know. Crazy. And just telling me she somehow found out where you live. Yeah, she said she got some P.I. to spy on me or something. What? How? I don't know. But listen, she's outside the house right now. Okay, hang on. What am I meant to be looking for here? Is there a blue sedan nearby? Hold on. Okay, I see a blue car. Is that it? Is there someone inside it? There's a lady on the driver's seat with brown, maybe dark brown, medium length hair. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen her in so long, but that's most likely her. All right. I still don't understand, dear. Well, Peter and I obviously built our duplex so that we could live with you guys, right? I mean, we all know that. But for some reason, she thinks that I built it for her. What? She thinks there's extra room in our house for her to live in. But she hasn't even seen you for almost two decades, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. She just randomly texted me and showed up. Well, is she in some sort of trouble? I don't know. I didn't ask. But I also couldn't care less, either. I didn't think I'd hear from her ever again. I've learned how to compartmentalize my feelings, and I've moved on. And then, now this! I don't know what to do. Should I talk to her? God, I don't know. Why am I being like this right now? And I'm so sorry that she's there right now. Hmm. No, no. Don't worry, dear. You're only reacting normal like anyone else in your situation would. I have an idea. How did you talk to her a while ago? We were just texting. Okay, then. Can you send me the text exchanges between you two and send it to my phone? Okay. You mean screenshot it? Yeah, do that and send them all to me. I need to get more information on this woman. Okay, and then what? And then, tell her that you'd be fine to have her stay over and possibly live with us. What? And by us, I mean you and Peter. Don't mention me and my husband. Okay, why, though? I just need her to stay put, right where she is. She can't go anywhere and you can leave the rest to me, Katie. I've got this. Trust me, it'll be fine. Okay. You and Peter just take care coming home and tell him sorry that I didn't get to speak to him. Tell him I love him and see you both later, all right? How long are you going to take anyway? Okay, hang on, let me ask him. He said maybe three to four hours, depending on traffic. All right. See you both later then. Okay. Please text me if you need anything. Hope you'll be safe. Don't you worry, Katie. I've got this. Hi. Oh, Katie! Finally! I've been sitting in the car waiting for you to open that door. You have an awful lot of neighbors here. I couldn't bring myself to knock on your door only to be made to wait outside. I thought I'd leave my car as soon as you opened your front door, but you still haven't. So, are you coming out? Or what? Well, I had to speak to my husband about this. Sure, that's important, isn't it? There should be no secrets between a husband and wife. Right. And did you keep any secrets between you and Dad? Katie, let's just focus on you and me here, okay? Right. So? And, well, I guess we can have you stay here with us for a while. But only for a few days first. You know, a little bit at a time. Just to test the waters, if you like. And if things work out, then... Well, if they work out, they work out. And if they don't, then they don't. How about that? Wonderful! Then are you going to open that door and let me inside? I've been keeping my engine idling. 
I'm going to park here, yes. You know, you could have just come outside and told me that to me in person. You could have picked me up. I'm just across the road. We need to fix that shy trait that you have, Katie. We can work on it, okay? Like I said earlier, I'm not shy. All right, all right. Well, anyway, I'll get out as soon as you open the door, okay? Sure. Judy, long time no speak, huh? It's been, what, eight years or something like that since we last spoke? It's a good thing I still have your number with me. But man, I would have never imagined to have to get in touch with you like this. Sorry, who is this? You don't recognize this number. Well, it looks like you were the one who deleted it, huh? I guess I would have done the same if I wanted to forget who my arch enemy was. What? It's me, Cecile. Cecile? I'm sure you remember me. Well, yes, but okay. How did you get my number? Well, I've always had it. I never deleted, but I take it you did. Anyway, this is not why I'm texting you. Do you have any idea why I'm here? No. Why? Well, you've parked yourself in front of my house, and quite frankly, it's an eyesore. What? Oh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't be silly. I can see you right through my window. See? Wait. OMG. But that house is where my daughter lives. My daughter, Katie. What's going on? I'm supposed to move in there right now. You still don't get it? Well, did I get the wrong address? I'll give you a minute to think about it. Do you get it now? No, OMG, why are you there? Where's my daughter? I was just texting her just now. Okay, you're still as dumb as a pole, huh? My son Peter is married to your daughter, Katie. What? So you're what? You're Katie's in-law. Well, you would have fooled me for a genius. No, but I thought her husband's parents lived somewhere far in Rochester. Well, that private detective of yours. Ryan McKenzie, was it? He clearly did a lousy job, didn't he? How did you know that? Did Katie tell you? You spoke to her already! So much for finding out about your own daughter. He couldn't even find out who she lives with or about her extended family. And besides, no, we do not live in Rochester. That's where my sister lives. Sister? Well, stepsister, to be precise. My mother remarried when I was young and had her, you see. I guess we both look alike. But clearly you shouldn't be charging this Ryan guy anything. Of course, unless you had to sell yourself for him in exchange for the wrong piece of information. Oh, God. So what now, hmm? You mentioned something like how you wanted to live with us. Um, well, I guess not then. Good, because if you wanted to live here, you would have had to help me pay off the mortgage. Right. And you wouldn't want that, would you? That'll be, what, some $1,500 a month? Can you afford that? I guess I thought I could be living rent-free there. You know, seeing as I'm Katie's mother and everything. Well, you thought wrong. But if you think you can pay that and live with me, of course, feel free. I'm sure I could easily be your worst nightmare. But jokes aside, I'd also love to have some help around the house. And so my husband. So, Judy, what do you say? <laughs> well, I'm currently still looking for a job, you see. I couldn't pay rent like that. And besides, now that I know you're Katie's mother-in-law, I wouldn't want to intrude in your personal space. Maybe I've changed my mind about that now. Might not be such a good idea anymore. You're damn right it isn't. You abandoned your daughter and husband and ran away with your lover. And you come crawling back into her life after some 15 years. And you couldn't possibly think of freeloading off of your daughter, would you now? That'll be so wrong. Right? Right. 
Or what? Anything you want to say to me? Hmm. No, no. You're right. You're totally right, Cecile. Looks like you're still as obedient as you were back in school, huh? Good. Now get the heck away from here and stay out of our lives. Sure thing, Cecile. Don't you dare show your face here ever again, or I'll beat your behind like I did in high school. And don't you think for a moment that I've forgotten how. I know all your weaknesses, Judy. Now get out of here! Okay, well, actually, I wanted to see Katie before I left. Is she inside? With you? You think you can ever go near my daughter-in-law again? After what you did? Heck no! Fry in hell! But, I mean, she's my daughter at the end of the day. I think she'd want to see me too now, right? Believe you me. She never wants to see or hear from you ever again. Okay, okay. Now get the hell out of here before I call the cops on you. I'll be out of your hair then. Was nice talking to you. Shut the hell up, Judy. Sure, okay. Bye now. Hey, Cecile. So we just passed Walmart and we'll be there in about 10 minutes. So, what happened to, you know, that woman? Oh, that leash is gone now. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dear. No offense. No worries. None taken. So, she left? Yeah, we had talked and had a conversation. Oh, wow. You spoke to her? Sure. I didn't let her inside our house, of course. We spoke outside her car. Oh, right. What did she say? Well, not much. I just told her that if she wanted to live with us, then naturally she'd have to pay rent here. To help out with the mortgage and stuff, you know. Right? And then? And then she told me she was unemployed, and how she couldn't pay anything towards the house. So then I simply said that the deal was off the table. Then she drove off and left. Oh, that easy, huh? Yeah, just like that. It seems like she was going to live off of you rent-free. That's why I called her a leech just now. Sorry, dear. Oh, no worries. I don't mind at all. Especially if that were the case. Yeah, so don't you worry. There's nothing for you or Peter to worry about. That leech is gone. Okay, great. Did she just leave, or do you think we might bump into her on our way home? Oh, not sure about that, but so what if you do, right? Yeah, I'll just give her the finger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, feisty. I like that attitude. Well, I'd like to say that I get it from you, Cecile. <laughs> oh, you're such a wonderful daughter-in-law. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, take care coming here. I made you that lasagna that you and Peter like. Oh, great. We missed lunch because we slept through our flight and didn't have time, so we're starving. Oh, great. You can tell me all about your honeymoon, then. Yeah. Can't wait to see you. <laughs> okay, you've only been gone for a week now. But still, you're the best mother-in-law I could ask for. Love you. <laughs> I love you too, Katie. You're very much like my real daughter now. So, see you in a jiffy, then. <laughs> you and your British slang. See you in a bit, love. Yep. On my way back home, Peter and I did spot this old woman dressed very badly, driving her car, grabbing onto the steering wheel as if to hold on to her dear life. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she really had mental issues. That crazy woman is definitely not my mother anymore, and I hope to never see her again. We were welcomed home with the best homemade lasagna followed by lovely chocolate-coated macadamia nuts with coffee. I brought them back from our honeymoon. Can you guess where we went? The answer is Hawaii! Oh, it was the best honeymoon ever! <laughs> we talked about our trip all night and laughed out loud, which is always the best feeling, especially when you do it with the people you love. As for Judy, my birth mother, God only knows where she is and what she's doing with her life. But I changed my number again, and while there isn't much I can do about her knowing where I live, 
I just hope I won't ever have to hear from her again. Out of sight, out of mind. And I just want to keep it that way. Thanks for watching! If you like this video, please like it and see you in the next one.